Hey folks, today I thought I'd talk a little bit about heart rate. Now, I, I struggled with coming up with what I think the right title was for this video because it also refers a little bit to using heart rate from a training perspective. Now, I should tell you up front, if you've seen my other videos, you know, I'm not personally the biggest fan in heart rate training. That doesn't make it wrong or right. I've got my reasons for that. And if you like heart rate training, you can certainly do that. But this is also applicable to getting your correct heart rate zones. But I'll talk some about some of the Garmin things that are out there because those are becoming more and more and more common. So for example, a lot of the Garmins now will tell you what it believes your VO2 max is. They have something called the recovery advisor. You can get training status. You've got the heart rate zones I mentioned. And depending upon the level of Garmin you have, there are many, many other features that will give you information about what is going on. And all of them are rooted a little bit in what's going on with your heart rate. So let's talk about that. So first of all, you need two things. You need an accurate heart rate and you need an accurate maximum heart rate. If your heart rate during your activity is not accurate, then that information you get isn't going to be accurate. That makes a lot of sense. And if you don't have the right maximum heart rate, then a lot of the information is going to be incorrect as well. So let's talk about how you get those things. So today, in general, there's two ways you're going to get your heart rate. You have the wrist heart rate monitors. That's a little bit, I've got a wrist heart rate monitor here. And you have, I had one in front of me, but I put my laptop in a different place. You have the chest straps that have been around for many, many years. And both of those will measure your heart rate. So I will tell you that the wrist heart rate does a fairly good job when you're not active. So as far as knowing what it is when I'm sitting here in the chair, as far as knowing what it is for my resting heart rate overnight, I find that it's fairly accurate for that. It's fairly close when actually running to sometimes kind of way off when actually running. There are some studies out there that have even shown that the wrist ones, especially when running and the faster you're running because it's, it's bouncing around, it's moving, just aren't as accurate as the chest strap. So my recommendation would be if you really want to get into, well, what's my VO2 max or what's this and the training status and all those other things, you are far better off to wear a chest strap when you're doing your activity. You don't have to obviously wear it all day because you're going to get a more accurate heart rate. And as I said before, if the heart rate's not accurate, then none of it is really going to matter. And then the wrist heart rate is fine for the rest of the day, resting heart rate and things like that. Let's talk about getting to your maximum heart rate. There's essentially three ways that you can get to that. One is there's a formula. We'll talk a little bit about that. That's what most people end up using. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, here's a spoiler alert. Those formulas are pretty much useless. Um, you can do a self-test. You can do a lab test. And a lab test is kind of the gold standard for how you would do that. So a common formula, and there's many, many formulas out there. I'm just going to use the real simple one is you take 220 minus your age, and I will tell you that is typically wrong. There are certainly some people for who it must be accurate. I have never met anybody where that formula works. So I'll give you a couple examples from me and how that works, because I've had my max heart rate tested, albeit not for a while. Uh, before I go on, I should say that your maximum heart rate is not an indication of your fitness. It is largely genetic. It does change with age. How fit you are can have an implication with how much it changes as you're aging. But just because somebody has a high max heart rate or a low heart rate doesn't mean that they're fit or unfit. It's very genetic. It's you as the individual. So when I was 42, I was tested for the first time. So 220 minus 42 would be my max heart rate's 178, except I was tested. It was 194. That's a really significant difference. Currently, look down below, I'm 62 years old as I'm recording this, so 220 minus 62 says my max heart rate should be 158. Although I haven't been tested for a while, I will tell you that I'm way above that when I'm in a 5K. That, that's just simply not right for me. If I go back to that first time I was tested and I was 194, there were several other people being tested. I remember one woman had a max heart rate of 212. So unless she's eight years old and she wasn't, that formula was way off for her. And somebody else was 164. And as I said before, it didn't mean the 212 was fit, the 164 wasn't fit. It was just unique to them. So my recommendation is if you're really doing things with heart rate, whether it be zone training or looking at all of that Garmin data, don't use that formula because that formula is almost certainly wrong. And even if you have an accurate heart rate from your chest monitor, you're not going to get good data because your max heart rate is wrong. Now, you can do a self-test, and here's how you would do that. You're going to want to have a steep hill. Not so steep that you're up on your toes, but you want a steep hill that's going to challenge you. And ideally, 
you can run up that hill for at least two minutes. If it's longer, that's fine. A little bit shorter is not too bad, but ideally you want two minutes. It takes a while to get your heart rate cranked up. You're gonna do a really good warm up, maybe a couple of miles of warm up first. You're gonna do a lot of drills afterwards to get your body limbered up. You're gonna to wanna to do some strides, you know, four by 20 second strides to really be ready like you would before a race or before you would track, at least I hope you're doing those things. They're not only limbering up your body, they're helping get your heart rate up a little bit because drills are a little bit of work. And then you're gonna do three by two minutes up that hill. And what you're gonna do is you wanna kinda of give it your all but you want an even effort. So what do I mean by that? Let's say for just the sake of example that your pace going up the hill at a really, really hard, everything you can do effort is an eight minute pace. Well, if the first part of the hill you're at a 730 and then you drop to 745 and then you drop to eight, then you drop to eight, 830 because you're just becoming gassed, you're not getting the best representation because it takes a while to get that heart rate up there. Ideally, you're a little bit, a little bit faster at the end of the beginning. So you want to try and get as even of an effort as you can. That's one of the reasons I said you want to do you know, three by two minutes. When you get to the top, after those two minutes, you walk back down. Let your heart rate get settled down a little bit. Don't just turn around and go right back up. So you might come down for two, three minutes if you're walking. You might walk around for another minute or two and then do it again. Same thing, do it again. And then take a look and chances are whatever your, get to that sheet, your max heart rate is probably the highest number you recorded. So most of the watches will tell you what your peak was in there. You can also look at the watch and, and see what that is. It's probably not your actual max, because it's pretty hard to run at your actual max, but it's close enough for government work, so to speak. So take a look and see what your heart rate is. So that's a way that you could self-test and get this done. Now, the gold standard for doing this is a treadmill test. When I say a treadmill test, I'm not talking about you hopping on your treadmill. It's where you go to a fitness center, a lab. There's a lot of different places they'll do it. They put a mask on you. It's it's pretty hard. It's hard to breathe in that mask. They're measuring oxygen. They're cranking up the elevation. That may be called a stress test. And in fact, some doctor's offices will do the stress test. But that's the gold standard. It's very hard. But they're typically going to do a very, very good job of telling you exactly what your maximum heart rate is so that you know that number. You can then go into Garmin or whatever you use and plug in your max heart rate and then start getting your heart rate zones. So again, if you wanna use all this data related to heart rate, whether you train with it or not, or looking at your VO2 max, the race time predictors, et cetera, et cetera, you've gotta have an accurate heart rate and an accurate max heart rate for that data to be good for you.